I think a lot of RV salesmen are jerks. Why are so many of you guys jerks? A lot of salesmen get beat up by tire kicker after tire kicker that when they actually get a buyer, they just assume that they are a tire kicker. A lot of you have had the experience when you go to an RV dealership, the RV salesman can be a huge jerk. And right now I'm actually on the phone line with a longtime RV salesman that's gonna tell us a lot of the whole dynamics of the RV sales industry and why most RV salesmen can be huge jerks. I've got my buddy Brian on the phone here. Brian, how you doing today, bud? Pretty good, how you doing? Good. So Brian, you've been you've been selling RVs for what about eight, nine years now? Yes. Well I was in the industry another twelve years as a technician, so I've been around the customers and the salesmen for over twenty years. Brian, can you explain to us a little bit why why do so many people think that R V salesmen are jerks? And I can attest I think a lot of R V salesmen are jerks. Why are so many of you guys jerks? Well in the industry for the sales guys, a lot of people are, are labeled as a tire ticket. Salesmen go through a rotation when they get a customer, so depending on how many salespeople are in the dealership, you might get two or three opportunities a week to try to sell an RV, and when you happen to get a customer who comes in and thinks they want to be an RV customer, but they really don't know if they're ready or not to buy, or they have to sell their house, I mean, there's a lot of factors that come into play which when is the right time to go visit the dealer. This video actually stemmed from a conversation that we were having this morning just talking about all kinds of RV dealers and I, I helped one of my clients sell a coach. I listed it on my channel last summer so I got a little bit of an experience of being an RV salesman myself at just fielding all of the calls when you list an RV for sale and Tire kickers are no joke. I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more on what Brian was saying. I mean, I, I had people that called me and I don't think they had any intention on buying that RV. They either wanted to call and talk to me or were just looking for something to do or just wanted to gain information, but they hadn't done their own homework on what it would take to get financing on this coach. They knew how expensive it was and there's there's gotta be some common sense you know, knowledge here and, and I understand, I kind of get an understanding at why a lot of these RV salesmen get worn down because, you know, there's three sides to every story. Most salesmen are commission paid, which means they're not going to get a paycheck unless they do sell a motorhome. And then the, most dealerships run the rotation to where first up, last up, and then they just follow that rotation. So if you're number 20 on the list as a salesman, you got to wait that day for 20 customers to come into the dealership to get one and then you want to give the customer the best experience but you start asking the right questions and then when you get a customer that's like oh yeah we're gonna wait till we retire my retirement's in like five years it's like one you probably shouldn't even be at the dealership doing your homework that's why they have RV shows and every region will have a big RV show once a year you can go through all the units not have to be bugged by the salespeople and just be able to look and get the feel for what an RV is and how it pertains to the industry. Generally, I like to tell people, if you're not three to six months of seriously pulling the trigger on a motorhome, you shouldn't even be at the dealership looking at the product. A lot of people have really lost their trust in RV dealers because they hear these these stories about, well, one guy paid 20,000 more here, or another guy paid 30,000 more, and I kind of understand it a little bit. There's definitely some super shady RV dealers out there, and they irk me. Uh, but, you know, I grew up in the business and I remember seeing an electricity bill in a 100,000 square foot facility for $40,000 for one month for just the electricity bill. So when you think about what it costs them to open the doors in these facilities and have these showrooms with just all these coaches sitting around, like these guys got to make a little bit of money. So you definitely want to get the best deal possible. but you've got to keep in mind too that they're going to make some money because there's no way that they can keep that you know huge facility open without that. So salesmen, they get worn down, Brian, and what, what are some of the other reasons that cause these guys to be jerks? We've got tire kickers, we call them looky-loos is another word, uh, another term we use for them. What are some of the other uh, things that irk RV salesmen? A lot of the snowbirds will come down to the region and they're at their board for the day and they just want to go and look at the motor homes or maybe look at uh, the new countertop colors or something like that. It's like, they don't, I don't think they realize that they just took the turn of the salesman and that was his opportunity to try to make any money that day. And it could have been his opportunity for that whole week. So 
I don't think they realize that they're burning the salesman's opportunity to make a living. No, I understand that. You got, you know, a, a wife and, and children at home and uh, you got a lot, lot on your table. So I could see, I, I'd probably get pretty frustrated myself. And so how this affects the industry is a lot of salesmen get beat up by tire ticker after tire ticker that when they actually get a buyer, they just assume that they are a tire ticker and they either broom the customer off or they don't they don't put the effort in that they should and really explaining the RV to the customers because they don't either one think they can afford to purchase the RV or they think that the customer has no intentions to buy the RV and it's kind of hard to get that customer to open up I used to try to win the customer over by my service knowledge and the ability to understand the coach not all self can have that ability but they might try a little harder if you kind of open up a little more to the customer and let them know your time frame and when you're ready to purchase. I'm not saying you shouldn't shop that salesman or do anything like that, but give a little bit of information in the beginning and really don't go to the dealership unless you're ready to buy in the next three to six months. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's some good point to bring up there. When I was selling that Newell coach, I'd have people call me and they would literally like pretend to be a qualified buyer just to try to talk to me on the phone. and then. We'd go 10 or 15 minutes through the conversation and i try to a answer any questions for them and ask as many questions as possible about, you know, whether this is going to be a good coach for them or not. And, and then they would have like an alternative, ulterior motive where they were trying to sell me on something or get me to make a YouTube video about something. And that was, that was really frustrating for me just um, knowing that this person just basically robbed me of maybe 15 minutes of my time, you know, because they they were being deceitful and, and there's just so many deceptive customers. And, and, you know, the RV industry has been deceptive. So automatically a lot of the customers kind of come off deceptive as well. The whole process, like you said, like you said, Brian, I think folks that are just shopping and getting homework, go to the RV shows watch YouTube videos, try to get as much homework done online and at the RV shows so that you're not wasting someone's time because there's someone like Brian uh, that's standing at that RV dealership and you may be totally burning their shot at actually getting a real customer. I think if, if less people were, were looky-loos and tire kickers, I think the RV sales would be able to be more aggressive. They wouldn't need so many salesmen there to take care of all the tire kickers. They could actually probably make you know less less profit and, and sell more coaches per person. But when you have to have all these people standing around to handle all these tire kickers, it's just the dealership's going to need to charge more money to facilitate having all those bodies at the facilities. So there's another version of tire kickers that I've seen. And that's people that know they want to get into the RV, but they're unsure of if they can drive the RV. So a lot of people, when they get to the RV dealership, they want to test drive the RV to build their confidence to see if they can even manage the RV on the road. You know, I've seen that a lot. And usually that's as close as the deal when they're close to buying is when you get them out on the road, you get the test drive, and they feel the confidence in there. Um, something I just thought of today is people, you know, you could go rent a box truck, you know, rent a 27 to 30 foot box truck, like a F750 or bigger, you know, go take that out for a day. Go spend a couple hundred bucks to rent that box truck and go drive it around town. The RV will be a lot easier and it'll be a lot smoother ride, you know? Another way that you can test drive a coach is if you go to an RV show, like I was at the RV show in California, Newmar was actually letting folks test drive coaches. And then also you can go to Motor Coach Country Club on Thursdays in the wintertime, uh, Marathon uh, Mal, uh, Marathon Mondays with Mal, Mal Williams will let you test drive a marathon coach. So there are different manufacturers that have displays and time set up. Now the Newmar salesman that I met at the uh, RV show in California had scheduled a time for me to drive a Newmar, but then he backed out last minute and said he had to look at real buyers. So. I got big leagued. I had set an appointment to drive a Newmar. I've never, never driven a Newmar, and that particular salesman even set an appointment with me, brought it up that I should drive a Newmar, but then he canceled that appointment with me because he had other more important people or whatever his excuse was. So that's a little bit back and forth. You know, I didn't ask to drive it. I would have driven it and would have shown all of you how a Newmar drives, but that particular salesman big leagued me. So there's driving schools in uh, different regions country. I know there's a guy in Kansas City, I don't know his name, but for five, six hundred bucks, he spends two, three days with you in your coach after you buy it, and he uh, 
goes through training both you and your spouse on how to drive the coach and kind of maneuver it through the city versus the highway. They start out in the parking lot. And, like, everyone who took his class, they, they said great things about it. It's kind of like getting a motorcycle. You know, you probably know how to ride a motorcycle, but taking that defensive course, you're going to learn a few pointers, you know. And I always recommend people do that. I would say people that own RVs, most times they're wrecked is parking them, moving them in a uh, campground. You know, usually the only wrecks you see on the interstate is if their tires were worn out and they have a, a blowout, you know. But outside of that, it's mainly backing up or turning in a tight space that they're going to do damage to their coach. But what is some of the stuff that customers do that, that really have irked you? I mean, I'm a pretty easygoing guy, but I did have one customer once. They were there. They had no intentions on buying it. They made it sound like they were in the market and they just wanted to hang around and smoke their cigarettes and uh, spend three or four hours on the lot going through coaches and it's like a lot of salesmen if they think you're a tire picker they'll probably limit you to the amount of coaches they'll sell whether it's three coaches because they just don't feel you're a buyer that's kind of knowing how you're getting groomed either one they won't take you out on the lot or two they limit you to the number of coaches you'll see if the salesman thinks you're a real buyer and you're ready to buy and commit within the next three months They'll show you every coach on the lot. Yeah, I know. That's good to know. And what are some of the things that folks can do to let salesmen know that they're a real buyer and not a tire kicker? Just giving them the time frame of, you know, there's lots of reasons why people upgrade, whether they want a bigger coach, smaller coach, or if they never owned an RV before. You really want to get a salesman that will listen to the customer, their wants and needs, and how, they're, how you're going to use the RV. The salesman doesn't ask you, like, those types of questions. They're just going to sell you whatever they want to sell you and what they think you like. If you haven't done your homework, the chances of the RV you're looking at today isn't going to be the RV that you should buy. And that'll cost you money in the long run because you'll end up having to trade that in, have it depreciated to buy the right RV. It's real important to buy the right RV the first time. Any advice that you have for any RV salesmen out there that might be listening? I would say don't assume that they're all tire kickers. Um, I've sold a lot of people that have been to the dealer and got other salespeople that groomed them. They came back to the dealer and got me and I ended up closing the deal and selling them. So not everybody is a tire kicker, but you just have to ask the right questions and uh, you know, treat everyone the same, whether it's a $2,000 pop-up or a million-dollar coach. A great salesman once told me it's the impact you're going to have in that family's life, you know, kind of the memories they're going to make with their grandkids, you know, and stuff like that. So whether they're a $2,000 buyer or a million-dollar buyer, you got to treat it the same. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's great wisdom, and I know you've been extremely successful. A lot of my clients have bought their coaches from you and are extremely happy. I'm happy. I bought my coach from you. You answered the phone on probably three Sundays in a row after I, because there's all this stupid little stuff I didn't know how to work, and Brian would take the time. I mean, he was like at his wife with dinner on a Saturday night once. He's like, dude, my wife's giving me the evil eye. He's like explaining how to work the generator or something. So that definitely... Uh, that's what I do for all my customers, and that's just, I, I'm high on customer service, and it's, it seems like there's no customer service out there in any industry anymore, and I'm real big on like how I want to be treated if I was buying something, and if I have questions, you know, it's like going to Home Depot, you can't ever find anyone to help you. I, I would try to be as most helpful as I can to my customers, because the better experience they have after they buy the coach, the more RVs they'll purchase down the road, and if I'm there to support them through their purchase and their journeys in the motorhome, I'll be the guy that they come to every time to buy their next motorhome. Well, hey, Brian, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to kind of share some of your wisdom uh, with all the folks out there on YouTube. Greatly appreciate all of you watching today's video. Appreciate all of you that are subscribing to the channel as well. I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again.